I definitely feel like the educating people, you know, in this transfer portal age on the significance of this game is something that we're going to do. You know, we're going to bring in. We don't know what former player yet. I think uh, we've already. I uh, know we've already. In, asked one guy hopefully he says yes i don't want to say his name because i don't want to call him out if he says no but if he says yes to come and talk to our guys about it and about just the history of the game so our guys can be educated on it and then um one thing that we're going to start doing is we're going to start doing educational sessions in the off season about this rivalry instead of having to do it the week of the game and distracting the guys from the real thing which is just go play smart tough take care of the football and worry about the team. I love it when somebody brings up something I had never thought of before. I had never thought of that before. With the transfer portal and with this new era of college football, especially for ASU, got 40-something guys in the portal. Yeah. There are not a lot of guys on ASU's roster who have a deeply ingrained knowledge slash hatred of the team down you don't, south you don't because they play, just got you, here. Yeah, he just got here. Sam Levitt he, just got here. He didn't play in last year's game. Right. He didn't get embarrassed in last year's game, right? Like he, that has nothing to do with him. He he's got to make something personal that's not personal to him at all. I mean, it is now because of what's at stake for ASU. But I never thought about that before. There are so many new guys on this roster. Man, the UVA rivalry on its surface doesn't mean jack squat to them. And, and you know, yeah, because you don't get you you don't get recruited out of high school come here and play all four years is it doesn't happen that much anymore it doesn't happen that much where you get the guy and he comes and he plays all four years. And how many times did you play U of A? Four times. What was your record? They know by heart what their record was. I was Absolutely. two and two. I was three and one. I was I never lost to them. You know, a lot of these guys come, they play a year or two, and then that's it because they come so late. So they don't have that same that same thing. It is amazing how the, the script has flipped on this game in a year. I, 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 I we're like you just you think I, I mean, I watched the game last year. So did you. There wasn't much of a reason to ASU was wrapping up a horribly disappointing season and U of A clobbered them. But given everything that seemed to be rapidly ascending for U of A with their players and their coach and how everything seemed to be rapidly descending for ASU. And to think that a year later, how dramatically things have switched between the two of them, where we had the U of A guy on earlier in the show. Brent Brandon might get fired after this game. He could lose his job he here in the next couple of weeks. He probably should be because the expectations were so high and they flopped so bad. You brought back Fafita, you brought back McMillan, and you thought that you had a team. And, and you know, where were they in the – we talk about ASU was last in the rankings. Weren't they, like, top three? I think they were preseason third or fourth. Were they third or fourth? Yeah, I mean, there were some yeah. people who thought they were a legit – play a college football playoff contender, the team that most likely to, because of everybody they were bringing back to win the big 12. Right. Right. So yeah, the, the, it, it has, it's, it's, it's switched completely a year ago. U of A was on top of the world with Jed fish before he left to go take the Washington job and Arizona state was struggling and the cupboard was bare and we didn't know how long it was going to take Kenny Dillingham to turn this thing around and to see where we are a year later is actually quite remarkable to be honest with you. It's quite remarkable that, that, that the switch has flipped that much. Yep. Kenny Dillingham talked about his connection to the territorial. College. Obviously I, I grew up going to these games, the rivalry games, my family grew up going to the rivalry games. So, you know, it's something that I've been, you know, regardless of where I coach throughout the country, like I would try to watch this game. If I couldn't watch all of them, like I would try to watch this game, try to record this game. Uh, just because it's, it's what, if you're from Arizona, like this is like, when's the, when's the Territorial Cup? Like that's a, that's a big deal. So from that perspective, it matters because it's something that's been a part of, you know, Thanksgiving. I think of Thanksgiving, like that's part of it to me, uh, you know, my entire life. Yeah. Fafita threw for 500. I'm looking at my notes from last year's game. Arizona Pumbles ASU. Fafita threw for 527 yards, four touchdowns with one pick. Um, it was U of A, U of A were, we ranked 15th in the country. They routed Arizona State 59 to 23. They had they finished the season nine and three. It was their first Territorial Cup win in Tempe since 2011. They that gave them back to back territorial cup wins for the first time since 2008 2009 uh like it was like it was to, humiliating it, it was, was humiliating it, was, it was a humiliating it afternoon quite, of football it wasn't quite 70 to 7 but they pummeled arizona state in that football game they pummeled them mcmillan 
11 catches for 266 yards in that game. Jacob Cowing, unbelievable in that game. Like, they clobbered him. What are you going to do? I mean, uh, you know, so a year later to think that, to think where both programs are a year later is almost, like, you almost can't believe it's, it's true. It's almost inconceivable. Right. It, it really, right. really is. Like, like, I don't know if, I don't know if being relevant ever felt further away than it did for Kenny and ASU that afternoon at Sun Devil, at Mountain America Stadium, pardon me, when they lost to U of A. It felt like they were years away from being relevant in college football. I, I, I still can't believe it happened. And I'll throw one been. more in. You know, Chris Carpenter tweeted this out a year ago at that time. This game concludes the worst two-season stretch of ASU football since World War II, mm-hmm. a direct result of the failures of ASU's presidents and now former AD. Kenny Dillingham said, we didn't get any better. We got worse. That was like it, it was bad. Like it, so, if you did play in that game for ASU, oh, it's payback. It is, but it, it is, like you got a lot to play for, but you want to step on their throats. And that might, after what happened, that might be something worth doing. I know you're off tomorrow, but Jody Jackson's filling in. That might be something worth doing tonight for me during the Suns game. Is to find out, or maybe our crack aces on the other side of the glass, the kids as we like to call them. One of them can get on it. How many? players for ASU played in last year's game. How many of them are left? How many of them been, have been, I'm talking about the two deep now. I'm talking about the two deep depth chart. How many of those guys actually played in last year's U of A game? It can't be more than a dozen, maybe. I, I it mean, was I, the largest margin of victory for Arizona in Tempe. Ever. The previous yeah. best was oh, 35. It, it, that was the largest margin of victory they ever had in 10 might Like you said earlier, it might not have been 70 to 7. It was bad enough that it more than made up for 77. Yeah. I mean, it, it, was, it, was, bad. it was really, really bad. So Kenny Dillingham was on SportsCenter today. What was his? What is his message to the team this week with so much at stake today? Same message. It's like everybody knows this game's big. Everybody knows this game matters to people that you've never met before. That it's bigger than you. It, it, it's bigger than me. It's bigger than anybody else. It's a rivalry that's that's deep rooted. But for us, in order to win these games, you have to stay focused. You have to stay focused on the task at hand, one play at a time. Play as hard as you can. Execute as well as you can, and repeat it, and repeat it, and repeat it. And like we've said all year. The game you're playing is the most important game because if you take care of business, it makes the best game more important than the game you just played. And good teams, right, they have a mindset that this is the most important game they'll ever play. And then when they win, the next game is the most important game they'll ever play. And you just repeat, repeat, repeat. I think Kenny's smart in that he's trying to make this week about beating U of A in the rivalry. But I think we all know it's not about beating U of A in the rivalry. It's about getting a spot in the Big 12 title game. And I know they're both the same thing, but do you to, almost wish they were playing somebody different? Um, no, because I, I, <laughs> you're not going to get down for this game. You're not going to overlook anybody. Would you rather they were playing? I don't know, West Virginia. No, no. I, I'm glad they're playing U of A for this. Okay. I, I'm, I'm just saying that it's it's easy for Kenny to to not. Like the public message for Kenny hasn't been, hey, we're playing for the Big 12 championship game this week. He's trying to simplify it and say, oh, we're playing, we're playing U of A. We're playing our rival. You know, we're, we're playing the team down south that we don't like very much, as opposed to the bigger, bigger picture thing that is at stake this weekend that is far more important than beating your rival. I mean, that's, it's like a hundred times more important than beating your rivalry, what you can do this weekend. But Kenny's not making about the big thing. He's making it about the smaller thing. The, hey, just beat your rival. Go beat them because we hate those guys. I think it was Isaiah Johnson, one of the U of A players. Like, it's it's scummy week. We got to get ready yeah, for the scummies. Scummy, he called the scummies. We got to get ready to play the scummies. Yeah, no, well, so we were going to talk about that a little bit later, but that's mm. that's good stuff. Thanks for watching Burns and Gambo. Click to see more from the guys and hit the button in the middle to subscribe so you never miss a video from Arizona Sports.